Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Charles, and uh, we have another version of the Bali Hotels Association podcast. And with me today, I have Miss Marie Brown. Uh, she's the Cluster General Manager of the Sheraton Bali Kuta Resort and the Alof Bali Kuta at Beachwalk. A very good morning, Marie. Good morning. Happy to be here. All right, a few questions about you first. Uh, where are you from exactly? I'm Irish, which those of you who know the accent should be able to hear it throughout this. <laughs> That's pretty unique, I think. A Welsh boy interviewing an Irish lady in Bali, Indonesia. So there you go. Where were you uh, working before you came to Bali? So I have worked around the world. Um, I left Ireland um, in 1999, not to date myself. Um, and I've worked in the US, in the Caribbean, um, most recently in Singapore. And then I've been in Bali now for uh, almost three years. So about working at the Sheraton Bali Kuta Resort and the Alof Bali Kuta, first some sort of COVID-related uh, questions. What health protocols do you have in place at the moment? So uh, I think like everybody uh, in the industry right now, we have implemented all of the required government-regulated safety protocols, but also Marriott has um, implemented very high standards of hygiene and safety. So these, um, like I think most international chains and most of the hotels in Bali temperature checks on all of the entrances, uh, hand sanitizers in all public areas strict cleaning programs throughout the hotel and social distancing in the restaurants etc. So there's quite a lot of protocols that are in place and um, as I think with everybody else as well, we've come a long way in the last year and a half in implementing those, making them part of our daily routine and, and making sure that our guests feel comfortable, safe uh, in our environment. So it's Marriott standard, isn't it? Because maybe not a lot of people know that the Marriott have taken over. Yeah, so Marriott and Starwood merged in 2016 and Sheraton was a Starwood brand. Um, I come from the legacy Marriott world. I've worked for Marriott since 1999 actually and um, I've been very fortunate to uh, work through the transition in the corporate world and then I came to Sheraton to uh, become a general manager. Nice. What is the present status of your employees? You know, how are you coping with regards to staff during this difficult time? Yeah, I think that um, we're very fortunate at this hotel, one, because we have an amazing group of people. And I know everybody says that, but we really do. Um, but Marriott, um, as a core value, we always put our people first. So the first thing that we had to do was to make our associates feel comfortable with what was going on. I think uh, we've all gone through a transition over the, the last year and a half. And first and foremost, it was about clear communication. It was about answering questions, being visible to the team and making sure that they felt taken care of. Marriott Indonesia, so all of our properties last year did a, a virtual run to give that was a fundraiser to help our associates that had reduced or no pay. We're gonna do another run to give this year, which we're really excited about. And um, from that, we um, gave our associates that had reduced or no pay, um, Bersama boxes or grocery boxes for a few months and that was really helpful. So those little things I think have really helped along the way but as we've kind of come through um, what we hope is the worst part of it we've also made sure that we haven't given up on the little things like recognition and rewards throughout the departments and making sure that the contributions that they're making right now um, are recognized and that people feel valued because I think that's really important right now. Well, so I'm guessing that you have to be a really good motivator to get through times like this, right? Yes, it's been a very challenging time. And as I said, we are very fortunate. Our team are amazing. And most of our associates that are with us right now, we have 163 staff right now. And they are uh, mostly have been with us from the beginning or have been with us for five years or so. Um, so we have first and foremost a good core group they know um, our standards they know that they're valued and taken care of but they're also in turn taking care of our guests which is great but for me I think the biggest motivator is one saying thank you um, we do a lot of recognition and um, I do a lot of personalized um, recognition for our team but also just listening to people um, throughout this whole process we've done town halls we've done general manager roundtables where we listen to the feedback 
impact that they have and we try to fix the problems that they're having um, but I think listening is one of the key things because when your employees feel like they're listened to they feel valued and part of the process. How old is the hotel exactly? I forgot to ask you that. Yeah, the hotel is uh, coming up on its nine-year anniversary in December. Um, so, yeah, we've we've been open for a while, and um, it's a very, I guess at this point, it's very popular and very famous within this area because we are attached to Beach Walk, and Beach Walk has a, a very good following as well. So, uh, yeah, we're very fortunate. Pre-pandemic, this hotel was very busy. And you smack bang in the middle of Kuta, actually you know you got your overlooking Kuta Beach it's a fantastic location so you're cluster manager for the two hotels so tell us a bit more uh, about each of the resorts that you manage so the Sheraton as we've said has been open for nine years uh, it's 203 guest rooms um, we're very fortunate because we have large spacious rooms it's 46 square meters is our, our smallest room here um, the Aloft will cater to a different kind of clientele so we've got our five star resort here at the Sheraton the Aloft Loft is a four-star offering. It has 175 rooms and uh, we'll have a pool, a three meal and a great bar in the lobby. Um, we're excited to open that later this year. So uh, it is part of the expansion of Beachwalk and anybody who's been into Beachwalk, now you meander into the whole new section with um, great new stores and uh, we then sit above that new extension. So. Is that when you walk in the main entrance? Is that uh, at the back on the left? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's where the old Harris Hotel used to be actually and they've uh, created a whole new complex so if you haven't been in there you need to go in there because there's quite a lot um, on offer in there and then soon there will be us as well. That's good. I'm happy because Marks and Spencer's are there. Yeah, <laughs> me too. A little bit of home. What redeeming factor sells the hotel or the resort? So for Sheraton, 70% um, of our inventory actually is Ocean View, so that's great. As we said earlier, this hotel is strategically located in the centre of Kuta. We've got um, kind of everything, the beach in front of us, the mall beside us, the entertainment behind us. So I think location is the number one, but obviously with views of the ocean, it's a, a huge selling factor for Bali. Mm -hmm. For the Aloft, our um, resort is really tailored to a millennial um, customer. And so the rooms are much more minimalistic, but they're very well positioned, they're tech friendly, and um, all of our offerings in the outlets, in the lobby, will all be tailored to that millennial generation. It'll all be very Instagram worthy, so watch out for us. I've been uh, staying at the Aloft in Bangkok, and it, it's trendy and funky and classy. So we're looking forward to that. So I want a, an invite to the opening, okay? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Which country was your biggest market? So prior to COVID, um, we were um, a pretty good mix, actually. We were about 30% domestic, 30% uh, Chinese business. And then our next two biggest uh, markets were Japan and Korea. So now, obviously, um, with uh, COVID in place, uh, we're very heavy domestic. And um, that's been great because it's given the domestic customer a chance to rediscover our hotel, mm -hmm. which has been really great. And um, we have a very um, big... Uh, number of loyalty members our Maria Bonvoy program in Indonesia and, and they've all come to try us out um, those that are here in the island so that's been great I think as we go into Q4 and Q1 Q2 next year we will continue to um, focus on our domestic customer but then try to reignite these international markets again as they open up but I think Japan, Korea will be um, two of the first, and then obviously Singapore and Malaysia after that, yeah. Um, seeing that the Marriott has joined you or taken over the, the, the name, do you think that the demographics of your guests will change because of that or not really? No, I don't think our customer will change. Our Marriott Bonvoy members are already quite a, a varied demographic, but if for us it'll be more about the two resorts. Sheraton is targeted to uh, an older generation customer, Gen X and above. The Aloft is targeted to the, the millennials, the Gen Z, and um, that will be our target and how we differentiate between these two resorts. What date are you looking at for opening? That's a great question. <laughs> uh, but we do believe it will be December 1 at this point. Forward bookings, I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? But are you getting any at all? I mean, looking ahead to Christmas time, perhaps? 
Yeah, we, I mean, we are very fortunate because this hotel does tend to outperform the market with occupancy um, because of our location, um, because of the attraction of the mall, especially for the domestic customer. Um, I think looking forward, it's very challenging uh, in that it's hard to know what's going to happen. It will depend on uh, how the market evolves with our restrictions, whether we open to international for Q4. Um, so I don't don't want to commit to a number right now and I think we're all waiting with bated breath for the borders to open and if for nothing more than to have free flow traffic in and out of Bali without as many restrictions that will help everybody in the industry. Of course all right kids do you cater for kids at the Sheridan? We do. Um, we have actually just implemented a new program, which is a Sheraton brand program called Side by Side. And Side by Side is catered not necessarily to kids, but to families, because the whole ethos of the program is that families need to be connected more now than ever. And we want to give them a way to enjoy time together while doing activities. So um, these are things like our grain to table program, which is a uh, kind of a souped up cooking class which kind of talks about where the food comes from we use locally authentic food so that we bring that into the dishes and then teach them a little bit about the Balinese food as well so it gives um, something for them to do but do together and that's what's really important um, I think the other one that we have which is our signature is the sunset picnic which is also a way for families to enjoy the sunset we do promote our sunset cocktails on the rooftop but for families you need to have an activity that they can enjoy so this is a nice way for families to enjoy the outdoors and um, also enjoy the beautiful sunsets that we have here in Kuta. Do you have any new programs that your regulars and returnees would love to hear about? Yes, of course, we always have something going, um, but right now we are um, promoting our Bali Sunset Escape package. Um, this is something that we put together a while back, but we've souped up so that our guests can really enjoy the entire resort. Um, it is tailored to a longer stay, so three nights or longer, and has inclusions like uh, sunset cocktails, uh, dinner for two, so they can really enjoy the entire resort. I suppose you're updating your regular guests through social media at the moment, yeah? Yeah, of course. It's one of the best ways to get to reach our customers, right, is through social media. So we have a lot of um, posts that we do. We update on our packages. We update um, just things that are going on in the area. And um, obviously, we're engaging with our regular customers via email as well. We've got lots of people that are reaching out to us from Australia, from Singapore, that want to come here and asking for updates. So one-on-one, -on -one we'll update our guests as well. So that it's nice to stay connected to those people that we don't see. Mm -hmm. Is there some people that we used to see very regularly that we miss? Yeah. Yeah, we all miss our regulars, don't we? Yeah. COVID aside, are your restaurants open to the public at the moment? Yes, they are. Um, the restrictions for restaurants have been eased here in Bali, which is great. Um, so our Bene restaurant is open now for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And we've got indoor and outdoor seating, so we're able to manage the uh, restrictions that are in place with social distancing and the proper uh, hygiene protocols. We've also, as I think most um, of the hotels in Bali have, have started to focus on grab and go food so we're working with grab we're working with gojek and we're able to bring some of our signature dishes from bene from feast from our patio to guests in their home which is great um, and also if you're walking down kuta anyone who's in bali right now we do have our patio open which has um, some of our favorite dishes and our new cruffles as well so if you want to grab a cruffle and a coffee and take a walk patio is the way to go it's making me hungry <laughs> Sounds delicious. General questions. What is the biggest challenge uh, you have as a general manager at the moment in Bali? Seems like a, an easy question, right? But not so much. I, I think this, um, for me, it, it has been very challenging. It, it is my first GM role. I have a lot of experience in hotels, in above property roles, um, but I never expected as a first time GM to have to deal with a, a global pandemic. So that has been a challenge. But I think that, think as most GMs here would say, uh, I've been very fortunate to have the team around me. They've been very understanding and uh, we 
we've been able to get get through it with a little bit of a sense of humor and a little bit of positivity and some forward thinking and um, we continue to do that now is it more important to be a good listener or a good communicator as a hotel general manager I think you can't be a good communicator if you're not a good listener, right? So um, I truly believe in listening to our associates. I make sure that I listen to our leaders, our supervisors, our line associates, and I tailor all of my activities so that I'm hearing from everyone. And then you need to communicate the changes that you're making based on the feedback, right? So I think you have to be able to motivate people through inspiring speech and things like that. But I don't think that you're ever going to be successful successful as a GM if you're not listening to your people. Uh, what do you consider to be the biggest challenge in the industry today? Well, I can't answer this question any other way than COVID-19, right? Um, I think this, uh, obviously, this island has been impacted significantly by COVID-19. And I think that the island has been very reliant on tourism. So we do need the, o- the island to open up. And um, I think that for us to regain the business that we had in 2019, we have to see travel global travel again right the the world has changed in the past 10 years right the, with globalization travels become so important and uh, we all rely on it so we need to get travel going international travel going most countries I, I think Ireland England even Australia right now right they're all reliant on domestic travel and everybody's pushing domestic travel right so that the economy keeps going but I think long term we need there to be global travel we need people on planes again um, and then we can all get back to business you know and finally if you were granted a wish for Bali what would it be I think like everyone I would wish for tourism to come back even stronger than it was before once that happens the associates the owners um, our guests everybody wins right but it also gives people the opportunity to come back to Bali to enjoy what is amazing about Bali which is the beaches the scenery the true authentic hospitality that is part of Bali's soul um, and that's what I hope for this island in the very near future. That's great Marie and thanks for your time today. So that is Marie Brown, Cluster Manager, General Manager of the Sheraton Bali Kuta Resort and the Alof Bali Kuta at Beachwalk. We're looking forward to the new resort opening soon and I'm sure you're going to get a lot of guests coming to see you at the Sheraton. Thank you again Marie. Thank you.